myself this is dr r krishna kumar associate professor of commerce from st joseph's college of arts and science going to give a lecture on basic aspects of excise duty you know that excise duty is an duty generally levied on the manufacturing of goods in india it comes under the indirect taxation so in these aspects we are going to see the basic concepts types of excise duty and the valuation aspects let us move to the meaning of excise duty an excise or excise tax is a type of tax charged on goods produced within the country it is a tax on the production or sale of goods the tax is now known as a central value tax it is mandatory to pay the duty on all goods manufactured unless exempted this is the common overview of the excise duty let us move to the meaning an excise tax can be defined as a kind of indirect taxation that is applicable for goods that are produced and sold within the territorial limit of the country it is basically differ from customs tax which are levied on goods that can be produced outside the country it is also known as excise tax for the purpose of levying tax initially this tax was helps the government to generate the maximum possible revenue but in time it has become an important part of a physical policy and has been played a critical role in the economic growth with this we shall move to the type of excise duty there are seven types of excise duty that are presently operate in india which are listed below let me explain one by one basic excise duty special excise duty additional excise duty cess national calamity contingent duty etc first one let me explain what is basic duty basic excise duty tax is levied as per the first schedule of the central excise act 1985 right so in this the basic excise duty can be fixed with the guidelines of the first schedule second one special excise duty the special excise tax are taken as per the second schedule of the central tariff act 1985 then third one additional excise duty additional duties of excise is the tax imposed as per the section 3 of the additional duties of excise act 1978 this tax has been determined at 15% of the basic excise duty that is being paid on the previously mentioned in the article next one says you know for the purpose of uh, promoting any part of the economic section let us take as education to promote that education sector they have the government has levied a common tax called cess so the education here the cess is applied as per the existing law for the excise tax such as a central excise act 1944 these are basically additional in nature the national calamity tax it also referred to as a nccd and it is applied as per the section 30 136 of the finance act 2001 it is taken as an additional tax on certain specific good so this is a national 
calamity contingent duty depends on the economic uh, national disaster or national uh, aspects which to be affected the economy next one we shall move to the valuation of goods so the basically the valuation of goods is the most important steps in the central aspects as it fix the liability as it fix the uh, liability in a is established and after the product is correctly classified so for this purpose they have go for the valuation before that we have to be take some of the excise tax rules that can be followed in india before the valuation we have to fix the rules the central excise act 1944 mentioned the rules for levying and collection the central excise duty and gives the union governments the authority necessary to make the rules for implementing the same what are the rules the rules can be classified in the following heads that is a central excise rule 2022 consumer welfare fund rules 1992 then central excise to rules 2001 so the valuation can be fixed based on this rule including the central excise rule 2022 central excise excise within bracket that is uh, removal of goods at concessional rate of duty of manufacture of the excise goods next one central excise rule 2005 central excise valuation rule 2000 all this can be taken into for the consideration of the valuation of a taxes the valuation under the central act can be fixed can be fixed on this 1944 according to this the value of the excisable goods has to be necessarily determined when the rate of duty is on ad valorem basis ad valorem basis means what the value it can be added value it can be added the following values are relevant for the assessment of duty the transaction value is the most commonly adopted method and the value determined on the basis of maximum retail sales price as per section 4a and the tariff value under section 3 so these are the three aspects which is to be taken into consideration for the valuation of the goods or valuation of central excise act that is a three act, three aspects one is what transaction value under section 4 second one value determined on the basis of maximum retail sales price as per section 4a next one the tariff value under section 3 so before going to the valuation let me have some of the classification of the goods for the purpose of central excise so this can be explained in the tariff central excise tariff act classification of good is an important precondition for applying the excise tax and this categorization has been done in the central tariff act 1985 this act provide a list of item that can be subject to the central excise tax clear right the act has 96 chapter that have been divided into 20 section the section deals the broad category of the goods some some of the example given in the classification of good for the purpose of valuation is section 1 
animal and dairy products for example section 11 textile and textile product section 6 deals with the chemical products so like this what the central excise tariff act can be classified the goods based on that we will go for the valuation valuation of the central uh, valuation of the excise duty so in this classification so there are the two laws can be enacted that is a central excise act and central excise rule so before that we shall these two act can be focused on the valuation in the sense of what goods valuation tariff valuation transaction valuation first one in the central excise act it can be deals with the good valuation the excise duty goods valuation act refers to the excise duty or basically ad valorem taxes and the valuation of goods is done as mentioned in the central excise act 1944 tariff value is decided by the notification and issued by the central government and tax are decided on the basis of this value coming to the part of your transaction value this is i uh, already told the transaction value is the most commonly used method determining the valuation of excise duty so here in the transaction value the important ingredients of this value may be mentioned below that is uh, it can be listed in the schedule one that is the goods should have been transferred by the assessee for the purpose of delivery at a particular place or time second one the word place of removal basically means refers to the warehouse or a factory which the goods can be produced or stored the price is the only factor considered for selling of goods so these are the conditions regarding the transaction value as per the central excise the central excise rules can be these are the rules have been framed amended and notified by the central government from time to time under the powers granted to by section 37 of the central act the rules prescribe the pros, prescribe the procedures to be followed from the from forms to be filled for a clearance and storage of goods the accounting licensing procedures procedures for refund refund of duty appeal against order and excise authority all these aspects can be mentioned in the central excise rules so in the central excise also it has to be listed the exemption for paying the excise duty some of the notification goods which can be exempted from the excise duty that is it is an uh, important to note that in this regard that the excise tax have to be paid on a regular basis unless the person is in question exempted from the same the tax this tax need need not to be paid in the case of the payer who is exporting the goods so generally the excise duty um, cannot be levied those manufactured goods which can be directly export to the foreign countries clear is right so for that exporting the product which can be manufactured in india and it can be directly focused to the Uh, focus to the uh, exporting then it can be exempted these exemption are also provide on the basis of the following criteria that is raw material used kind of manufacturing financial worth and the turnover all this can be taken into consideration so these are the uh, overview about the excess duty so in this lecture we have discussed the meaning the uh, types of excess duty and the valuation and the law prevailing or law which can be related to the excess duty hope you have the clear understanding about the central excess duty so with this 
I end with my lecture. We will proceed further in the next 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 slides. Thank you.